I think that the biggest thing that I learned over the summer, and it was actually to my delight, is that the the biggest work and the most rewarding stuff and is is the stuff that doesn't feel like work. It really was the times we were sitting around the table, shooting the shit about these stories that we just we just recorded and talking and talking and maybe going for walks and thinking some more. Like that was where the real work was. The real work wasn't sitting down to edit or making those calls or shot listing. Like that was sort of incidental, but where we got the most done was where we sort of let our minds wander, I think. And that it was such a nice surprise to find that, that you can do that kind of work and get something that you're proud of just by sort of um, letting, giving yourself the time and the luxury to think about things and tease out those elements that if you don't have time to think about that they'll never emerge. So I think that's the thing I learned, probably. Um, I mean, I think overall in terms of like being part of a summer show, that I, I learned so much. Like I, I normally work at The Current and there you're kind of one you know, cog in a bigger machine and it's really interesting and great training, but to get a sense of you know, overseeing an entire process, not just like you know, producing the show and all the elements that go around that and the web development and the promotion, but also just getting a sense of how this place kind of operates. And I felt like before this, I would sort of take the elevator to the third floor, go sit at my desk and then leave. And then suddenly I, I, I felt like I understood a little bit more just about CBC. Uh, but then also, every, you know, having your hands in every aspect of a show is incredible. It's just like the, learn, the, the amount of learning you do is just insane. And I agree with you that it's all really fun because you own it. So it's like, you know, when you're, if you're here till 11 o'clock at night, <laughs> it feels better somehow that you're doing it. <laughs> that you're doing it because you're passionate about it. And, um, and so I, like, I remember, I think both summers coming home exhausted every day and just being like, oh my God, I just spent like all day having to make the hardest decisions or it feels like really big decisions about everything. And, but it's such a great kind of exhaustion. So I'd say that part is really fun too. Um, in terms of being, owning the show, Josh, I think that was to me one of the more, the, one of the most rewarding things about um, working on a summer show is that every decision you make you're making because you think it's the right decision and with, with you know, the input of, of people that you really trust and admire. And um, so in that way, you're not really beholden to anything. I mean, you have the structure of your show and you, you, know, you try to um, you know, fill the certain slots in the way that, that you, you think is appropriate. But, but in terms of, you know, um, is this story more interesting than that story? That's your decision to make. And that's a really, I don't like the word empowering, but it's an empowering thing to be able to say, you know, um, I really think this is interesting and I think other people are gonna find it interesting too. And being able to trust your instinct on that because if you are given us this great opportunity to, to do a summer show, you've, jump, you've already jumped through a whole bunch of hoops and the people that make the decisions really trust you and you have to trust that they trust you to, to make the decisions that you're gonna make and to um, really sort of carry out this vision that at one time was just on a piece of paper. Um, the other thing that I'll mention in terms of uh, working on a summer show, as Josh kind of mentioned this a little bit, workload. So you really are in control of your workload. I mean, there are times when, you know, there were times, lots of times when we were here late, um, but there are times when, you know, we got to leave at four o'clock on a Friday. And so there's a lot of control that you have over your life over the summer. And it's all, um, because you own the show and the process, you figure out how you want to spend your time. And um, it depends on the kind of show you're pitching. So uh, Niru Kumar, the host of Intersections, the show that um, we put together last summer, that show was pretty much uh, you know, a mini documentary or a full documentary every episode. That was really labor intensive where um, you know, we were out in the field for every episode gathering tons of tape. And it was so satisfying to come back and say, we, like, we basically made a, d a half hour doc per week. That kind of workload compared to what to what we did last summer for how to do it was different, but I don't think either of them was any more or less satisfying to the listener. So in, when you're thinking about what's going to be valuable to to people, the amount of work that you put in, um, it's not always you know cramming more segments into a show or um, having more voices in in that 27 and a half minutes. It's really trying to figure out like what's the nugget of what you want to convey with the show and what's the best way. Um, to get there.
pinpointed a particular story that we thought would sound good in our show, I think that's when we felt ready to start really honing the pitch. That being said, we never actually ran that story, <laughs> but, but it did give us a point of focus, I would say. So yeah, I would say that if you're pitching a show and you're not sure if you're ready to pitch it yet, think of the one thing you really want to tell and, and why you really want to tell that particular story, and it might help um, sort of put it together more cohesively. I don't know if you guys have. That's interesting. Because um, I remember when I was thinking of the I, uh, thinking about coming up with an idea for the show, and knowing that I would have arrived there when I could look at a story and say, oh, that story is not for my show, or this is how I would treat that story if it wasn't my show. And I think the tipping point to finding that was, I, mean, I, kinda, I, I knew, and maybe wasn't even able to articulate the sort of tone I wanted and the kind of stories I wanted to tell, but I couldn't find a framework that would say, you know, that would just kind of divide the world up a tiny bit so that every possible story out there wasn't relevant to me. And it was the, ha the I was like walking my dog, I think, on Queen Street. I don't know. And I was like, a how-to guide. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and I rushed home. Um, but that was sort of the start of it. And then I think Sarah added another element to it. Um, I had kind of a, 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 set, a close to fully formed pitch. And then Sarah sort of added this element of, of the irreverence and being like, oh, I love the dark stuff. Let's, let's take it into the, the kind of darker world. And I felt like that took it up a notch and also became, it made it much more refined. Um, but then even from there, I mean, we, we submitted the application and then had, like, I think maybe the most epic development process <laughs> ever <laughs> um, for a bunch of reasons. And I think we really benefited from that. Like we, it took us about two years to go from the submitting it and, and there being a kind of interest on the side of CBC to actually, you know, getting it actually greenlit as a summer show. And in that time, we had the benefit of, of making a pilot and having it focus grouped and having it, I don't know, <laughs> like exactly, <laughs> uh, which is great because I think the thing to me is like you only can do so much of it in theory. Like you can have the concept, you can write it on paper, you can kind of think about it. I think this is the tone I want, but it's really only I felt like once we made the pilot and started to actually think like, what is our relationship to this material and what does that sound like and what's our relationship to each other and what's that going to sound like? We could we can you know, write an essay, we could write, you know, I'm sure you could do a PhD on that, but it was only once we actually did it and then refined it and kind of, and, and, you know, with, even with the pilot, I think we still hadn't entirely answered it. I think it was a lot of those questions happened the whole way through. But I would say that pilot making process is huge in terms of saying, okay, this is theory. How do we actually make that work? And what actually was just like a, a pipe dream? <laughs>